Welcome back to JR Eve Unleashed. Today we have Joe Rogan and Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about the incredible new discoveries the James Webb Space Telescope will be able to make, such as actual footage of the formation of stars and a great deal else deep within the infrared spectrum. They discuss how the James Webb Space Telescope is a game changer in the world of space exploration and discovery. It is said to be the largest and most powerful space telescope ever built. It will be able to study every phase of cosmic history from the formation of the first galaxies to the formation of stars and planetary systems. The JGOSD will be able to see through the dust clouds to observe distant galaxies, stars, and planetary systems, and will be able to detect the chemical composition of planetary atmospheres. SpaceX, founded by Elon Musk, is also making waves in the space industry. The company's mission is to make space travel accessible to everyone, and its reusable rockets and spacecrafts are revolutionizing the way we access and explore space. Let's get right into the interview with Joe Rogan and Neil deGrasse Tyson. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to be updated on all our future content. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Because 14 billion years later, the expansion of the universe has redshifted the ultraviolet into the infrared. Oh. So if you want to see the birth of galaxies, you got to know what they look like in the here and the now. And in the here and the now, it's in the infrared. So this is a telescope specifically tuned to see galaxies born at the edge of the universe. And infrared also allows you to see deep into gas clouds. Now, when they're showing you an image like this. So right this, here, this is the pillars of creation, which were so named at the time Hubble first attempted this. We were gaga over the Hubble image of this. And now, like the, the JWST, oh my gosh. For those who are more prone to religion, some have called this the hand of God. Because if you look at the pillars, um, you can kind of picture like a, you know, a thumb and uh, fingers. You know, fingers, yeah. So, but, but regardless, this is nearby. This is the telescope peering deep into gas clouds that otherwise would enshroud what's going on. And you get to see stars being born, planets being born. And so what's remarkable about JW, JWST is that to be tuned for the edge of the universe and the birth of galaxies is the same properties you would want to see the birth of stars. A star is born right in front of your nose that would otherwise be cloaked by gas. And infrared penetrates those clouds and enables you to see it as though the cloud isn't even there. And you already know this because when, if you're driving through fog, okay, you put on your fog lights. The fog lights are not blue. They're like reddish, amber, okay? That improves your ability to see through the fog. If we could see infrared, that's the kind of light you'd use, then you wouldn't even know the fog was there. That's why self-driving cars will be amazing. It won't matter if it's foggy. They'll mm. be able to see everything. Just give them infrared sensors. The fog is irrelevant. They can dr drive 100 miles an hour in dense fog, and all the cars will see each other. And they want to change lanes. They tell other cars, I'm going to change lanes. They'll part for them, open up, and we won't get 40,000 deaths a year, as we currently do from automobile accidents. Now, how much bigger is this telescope? So, um, it's about, so you want to think about collecting area, and I forgot the exact number, uh, something like eight times uh, around there, uh, more powerful in the sense of it can see things uh, eight times dimmer. Uh, yeah, that, there oh, you go. There you so go. that's uh, wow. two, it's about two and a half squared. It's about eight times the area. And, and the technology obviously is improved as well. So like the ability that... Well, our, our detectors are better. And uh, let me remind you that when the Hubble was designed, it was designed in like the 1980s and it was scheduled to go up uh, and then we had the Challenger accident, oh. and that delayed the shuttle program. So there's Hubble sitting there in mothballs with a with an old Microsoft chip, and by the time it launched, it was already not as fast as it could have been. And so the very first servicing mission swapped all that out and put in uh, better uh, uh, methods and tools for measuring what it is we always needed it to do. So this is so one sad part about this is that it's not serviceable. We have no access to that point in space a million miles from the moon. Musk's vision for colonizing Mars and his commitment to sustainability has captured the imaginations of young people around the world. 
His use of reusable rockets and other cutting-edge technology has shown that space travel is no longer just the stuff of science fiction, but is becoming a reality. We haven't left low Earth orbit since 1972. We're not going out a million miles from Earth to fix a telescope. Mm. So that's unfortunate. Maybe a robotic fix? I don't know. To refill some of the the fuel. It needs fuel to station keep. Didn't it get hit by a micrometeor? Yeah. Well, that's 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 the brakes when you're in space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's not. It doesn't affect the overall performance. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's huge, and the micrometeors will do small damage, but. What? You don't. You don't want it in the middle of a meteor storm. That would be right. Uh, totally bad. And yeah. do they? I mean, they obviously know like where some of the uh, asteroid belts are and where some of the like yeah, nearby so the, Earth objects are. Yeah. So in in this context, so first, most asteroids are in the asteroid belt. So that's between Mars and Jupiter. So I have an asteroid named after me. And, Congratulations. I, I don't mean to brag or anything. I don't Can't mean, you like get a star named after you online? Not le not, not, not authentically. You just get robbed. <laughs> <laughs> you just pretend. They send you a map with your, with your with your name drawn in the map. So you and, pay for a piece of paper. Yeah, they claim that it goes gets registered with the astrophysicist, but it doesn't. Um, oh. No, we, there's only one way we name stars, and that's by committee and by traditions and this sort of thing. Uh, it's they're fascinating traditions. So planets are named after Roman gods. And pl planet moons uh, are named after Greek characters in the life of the Greek god who's the counterpart to that Roman god. Wow. So Jupiter, for example, one of its moons is Ganymede. Ganymede was the manservant of Zeus, and Zeus and Jupiter were corresponding uh, gods in mm. Greek and Roman. And not only that, two th what's the number? Is it a... About half, somewhere around there, of all the stars in the night sky that have names have Arabic names. So in my field, we have deep respect for people who made great inroads into understanding the natural universe. And the golden age of Islam from a thousand years ago made material contributions in this regard. And, of course, Greek and Roman legends and this sort of thing. So there they are in its influence on Western culture. So, yeah, no, the universe is a fun place. Pretty fun place. Oh, yeah. So this James Webb telescope, in terms of its ability to recognize things, like what magnitude of improvement are we talking about from the Yeah, factor the of Hubble? 10. Yeah, factor, factor, factor of 10. 10. Yeah, easily. That's right. Well, the, a factor of 10 for the things Hubble could see, but it's incalculable when it sees things that Hubble could have never seen because mm. Hubble was not tuned for the infrared. So then you can't even compare it. It's a complete uh. other window opened up to the universe for you. So what has changed in terms of our understanding? The, the, the web has been in the, in the million mile orbit or however far away it is for how long now? Uh, well, it got there and then we did some engineering. So I, I guess a year, year and a half. Yeah. And, and what has changed in our understanding? So that's, that's been people's first question. And what I want to do is temper that to say something a little different. So, yes, we expect James Webb to make great discoveries. We expect that. But the first order of business is hardly ever, let's discover something new today. It's, here's something that we have limited understanding of. Let's improve on that. And in so doing, we deepen our understanding of how things work in the universe. That doesn't always involve overturning a previous idea or discovering something that nobody ordered. All right? That will happen. We fully expect that to happen. But we targeted parts of the sky initially because we know other telescopes have gone there before. And we're going to say, how can we further advance and deepen our understanding? One thing it's going to be able to do, and it has already done, we have, you know how many exoplanets there are? SpaceX's work has also led to an increased interest in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields among young people. The company's successful launches and landings have shown that with dedication and hard work, anyone can contribute to the advancement of science and technology. In conclusion, the James Webb Space Telescope and the work of SpaceX and Elon Musk are helping to inspire a new generation of young people to be interested in space travel and technology. With the gem of ST set to launch in the coming years in SpaceX ongoing work, the future of space exploration and discovery is looking bright.
His observations are providing new insights into the formation and evolution of the universe. Make sure to check out the full episode with Joe Rogan and Neil deGrasse Tyson by heading over to Spotify. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to be updated on all our future content. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.